Welcome back, guys. <clears throat> uh, today I am um, satisfying a few requests. Um, I've ha I've had several requests to review Ob Revenge, which is a uh, <clears throat> it's a sp it's an Arch Linux spin. Um, I hesitate to call it an installer because it's actually more than just an installer. Uh, the developer is Cody. Uh, I'm sorry, Jody James. And um, f first off, let me say that he's done a terrific job with this distribution. He's he's added a few things that really make it stand out from other uh, Arch installers. Um, and there are multiple good points about this distribution. So um, kudos to Jody. Uh, Jody, I hope you stay with this project because... I believe it has a tremendous potential. <clears throat> now, the install was no problem. As a matter of fact, this has to be one of the easiest installs of Arch Linux that I've come across. It uses the Calamaris installer, which is what Manjaro uses. So if, you, if you've ever done a Manjaro install, you'll be right at home with this installer. Uh, everything went flawlessly. There was one issue. The issue is not exclusive to OB Revenge because I've had this issue in the past with other distributions. <clears throat> but what happened was when I installed, I didn't want OB Revenge to control the boot process. So within Calamaris, there is an option not to install a bootloader which is what I select most of the time I selected it and it finished the install but when I went to my controlling um, distribution which in this case right now is um, Anturgos when I went to Anturgos and I ran um, OS Prober and then I updated my grub configuration it basically found the OB Revenge install but when OB Revenge installed the grub uh, configuration file which even though you're not installing a bootloader um, the distribution installs a grub configuration file so if you go into your root folder go into boot and grub you'll see there's a grub configuration file even though you elected not to install a bootloader because it needs to identify itself to the distribution that's controlling the boot process <clears throat> the problem is that when it it does that uh, identification process through the fstab through the UUID and what happened was the grub configuration file had the wrong UUID. So basically I had to open let's see let me let me go ahead and open this file so I can show you I'm gonna open it with leafpad okay so I, I need to be signed in as root. Um, so basically make a long story short when the grub configuration file was written it put the wrong UUID for the petition so when Anturgos went through its OS prober and update grub uh, it updated grub but it didn't update with the correct information so what I had to do was I had to identify what is the correct UUID of um, OS uh, I'm sorry o OB revenge and update the grub configuration file in OB Revenge and then update go into Entergos and OS Probe and run update grub and so let me go ahead and sign in um, let's see I'm gonna open PC man FM as root and then <clears throat> go into file system boot 
grub grub config so if you scroll down you will see that there is the set root UUID and that has to be correct and so I had to manually update this file now just for your information if you run lsblk you will be able to find um, see there is and let's see you can see that sdb4 is my currently booted root file and so this is the f stab that needs to be in that grub config file and so if you take a look at that that's what I now have in this file I had the wrong it, it populated with the wrong UUID so therefore it would not boot but once I adjusted that boot config the grub config file and then re-updated Anturgos then basically when I rebooted Anturgos and the grub screen came up OB Revenge was listed properly I was able to boot in no problem so but that happens with other distributions it's not exclusive to OB Revenge I'm not sure what causes that but um, I've become good at fixing that problem because I've had it so many times so let's go over some of the statistics on OB Revenge and if we all right today's the 24th of October OB Revenge same specs as other reviews that I've done with this process uh, uh, so allow no bootload new bo no bootloader install uh, yes but it didn't work I had to reinstall with grub to the root um, what I did was when I when I elected not to install grub it wouldn't boot so I had to reinstall OB revenge and install grub to the root partition and then I was able to fix it and all is well now um, Wi-Fi install no for some reason it didn't recognize my Wi-Fi I had to plug in Ethernet the install time was about nine minutes so it's 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 less than um, the typical arch installer it's more in line with Manjaro boot time was 12 seconds uh, the default kernel was 4.7.6-1 but it actually automatically updated uh, through the arch update for update utility and right now I'm at 4.8.3-1. RAM usage was 453 megabytes on first boot. CPU usage on first boot was 0.05 load average. So it's it's a low resource. Um, it didn't come with a whole lot of software, but that's a good thing. Uh, then I was able to add what I needed. NVIDIA, yes. Um, it did install uh, NVIDIA however I had to manually install NVIDIA settings which is no big deal Broadcom Wi-Fi I installed it through the command line as I most often that's the case um, not many distributions actually recognize it and install it out of the box my printer install yes Netflix install yes and I'm using Chrome the default theme is arc dark I changed it for this video only because I wanted a lighter theme for the video um, the default icon theme is Fienza I changed it um, I'm running a different icon theme and I'll get into that in a moment um, the font is Cantarell 11 47 wallpapers, 7 icon sets, 5 themes. The desktop environment is a combination of XFCE Openbox. Um, the window manager is Openbox with an arc dark default theme. 
distro family is arch no office uh, applications come installed that's a good thing I like to install my own as you can see I installed WPS office which works wonderfully and you can install that through Yowit um, for gaming Steam no problem and Battle.net no problem through wine and wine tricks fantastic okay so there were a few issues for some reason my fans are spiking sporadically so uh, for example a few times when I just open a, 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 a you know a finder window a file manager window the fans will spike uh, they go right back down again I'm not sure why that's happening um, I had some issues with the uh, mirrors and I'm not sure exactly what the cause was. I basically ran uh, the utility uh, after that, uh, you know, ranks the mirrors by speed and sets up your uh, system accordingly. And I haven't had an issue since then. Now for auto start, um, that's where I have a, a few issues. I'd like to make a few suggestions. Um, let me open this up a little bit. Okay, so there is a menu. Um, for auto start. And let's see system. Okay, OB revenge auto start. If I use this system, it doesn't work. Not reliably. Uh, when I try to add a system utility which monitors my uh, keyboard and my my uh, wireless keyboard and mouse it it's called solar it works with logitech wireless devices um, it I could not get it to load at boot using this process so this utility that Jody has added I couldn't get solar to add what I had to do is I had to go into first I, I had to show hidden files and then go into I believe it's config and then open box and then auto start I, I ended up having to add it in there I also went to there was another configuration file um, that I went into and I added the program I added solar there and that that I finally got it to to load on boot but I could not get it to work through this utility also I I couldn't get it to remove so for example parcelite is loaded by default and if I click remove and I type in parcelite it doesn't actually remove it it still will be there on the next boot so the OB revenge auto start utility needs some work um, for preferred applications it's too limited you've got a browser and a mail reader file manager and terminal um, should add text uh, reader or uh, word processing utility it should be a spreadsheet office type things in there uh, because the only way that I have found to identify the identify my preferred applications is to right click a file so for example if I go into finder and I right click a file um, then I can identify open with and if I say leaf pad if I say leaf pad and I, I click OK 
it will ask me if I want to use that utility from now on and of course I selected yes and that's why my uh, text file is open with with um, leafpad now I assume that's going to work that system would work with other types of files um, but I haven't tested it out but basically my point is put them into preferred applications get the office applications in there get the video applications get the audio applications get them all into preferred applications uh, the other thing is I'm not sure that there's anything to be gained really from going uh, uh, on a combination of XFCE and, op and open box um, you know we've got the whisker menu you've got the panel selections you've got you, you know you can go with the the tint 2 panel you can go with the LX panel you can go with the XFCE panel and I understand the importance of uh, providing the choices however um, to have PC man FM as the file manager with at the same time you're running whisker menu I don't know what's to be gained by not just putting Thunar as the as the file manager how much resources would you save are you saving by going with PC man FM so and I think it adds some confusion to the user because when you see when you see uh, uh, XFCE for example and you click on the settings you're, you're used to seeing the XFCE settings manager which has everything in one place here you've got you've got theming but when you click on the theme it brings up the XFCE look and feel um, it, to me as an XFCE user it's confusing because we're combining several features to the point where it becomes a little bit confusing especially if you're running open box because then if you get into um, open box config or obconf then you are totally confused because you you're basically using the settings managers for two different desktops so to me that aspect of it is a little bit um, confusing however there are other aspects of the uh, proprietary things that Jody has done that I think are fantastic adding the system info system monitor um, having the uh, welcome screen pop up with the ability to update and all of the things that he's provided so as you can see and I'll close this out um, when you boot up you see this this is wonderful you can update your system you can install various software packages you can read the documentation you can install your NVIDIA drivers uh, you can re remove virtual box modules so it's it's really really nice now the software installation tool Uh, as you can see, you can install internet related applications, media, office, and he's done a terrific job. So Jody, if you're if you're watching, you you've done some terrific, terrific things with this distribution. Um, and I would try to simplify as much as possible, be as intuitive as you possibly can. Some of the some of the uh, uh, items some of the utilities are not as intuitive as they could be and I'm not sure if you want to continue along the path of the melding of XFCE and open box because it it can be a little bit confusing and I understand the reasoning however I'm not sure what how much you actually save uh, when you combine the two. Uh, if you went with 
XFCE across the board, the panel, the whisker menu, the the theme, um, uh, theming, the settings manager, the file manager. I think if you went with XFCE across the board, you'd have a much wider acceptance. You'd get more people installing your distribution, which I assume is the ultimate goal. So that is it for this video, guys. Uh, all in all, I think it's tremendous. I think that Jody should stay with it. Uh, I think it has tremendous potential. The, the Calamaris installer is absolutely top notch. Stay with that. It is the easiest way to install Arch Linux. So guys, I have been running uh, OB Revenge for a few days now and I'm sticking with it. I'm going to use it as my daily driver for the near future because it, it does feel very, very snappy. It feels very fast. Even though my fans spike occasionally, it probably has nothing to do with OB Revenge uh, because all in all, it's running absolutely flawlessly and I love it. So, uh, Jody, please stay with it. Um, stop by and comment in the comment section of the video. I'd love to hear from you. And, uh, guys, thank you very much for the recommendation to install OB Revenge. I think it's uh, absolutely terrific. So that is it for this video, guys. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Take care.